Hello and welcome to part 3 on limited company accounts and in this video what I'll be covering is aspects of limited company accounts okay and, and this will be to do with uh, share specifically so we'll have a look at the difference between authorized and issued shares we'll have a look at dividends debentures and then capitalization of shares which is to do with a bonus issue so just some notes on shares and the previous video did focus on on this so when you look at a past paper question what aqa tend to do is they throw in certain keywords around shares or around limited company accounts okay so to avoid being thrown off by what are they talking about i thought i'd put some slides together um, covering some of the generic aspects to limited company accounts and obviously here we are focusing on on shares so the first thing at the top is you need to know what the difference between authorized and issued share capital is okay which is actually quite simple it's nothing complicated so the first one authorized is basically there we are authorized is the maximum number of shares that the company can issue so when a company decides to go onto the stock exchange they will have a limited number of shares that they can sell okay so it could be that they have for example a million shares that have been authorized to be floated onto the stock exchange and they may, may decide to you know sell 600,000 shares okay and obviously those shares might be taken up they might be sold to investors and they still have 400,000 shares left to be sold and they may not decide to you know sell those shares at that particular point however at a later date they might decide to sell a further 200,000 and then the rest of the 200,000 so authorized shares is simply how many shares a business can issue onto the stock exchange okay and that is limited okay there is a process by which a company has to go through to have shares authorized if they want to extend the number of shares that they wish to sell there is a process for that so authorized share capital is the maximum they can sell in quantity then you have issued share capital which is the number of shares that are already in issue at the moment okay so you you will have one of two scenarios scenario one is they have authorized shares of a million but they've only issued some of those okay and you might have the second scenario where they have authorized shares of a million and they have issued all of them the full million okay so either a business has sold some of those shares or all of them and that is the difference authorized is maximum they can issue and the number issued is how many they have actually sold already okay so they can choose to sell them all or to sell some of them the next point that you need to know is when AQA put a question together they'll talk about an interim dividend and a final dividend okay an interim dividend is a dividend so for example if you decide to invest in shares uh, in Tesco you what will usually happen is if they've had a profitable year they will give you a dividend they will give you a share of profits okay you can't you're not just going to if you're going to invest in a, in a company you're going to expect a return on your investment so if you invest in a 200 pound share you're going to expect you know some dividends back a share of profits okay why else would you invest in a company so that is what a dividend is a return on investment and as a shareholder your company may provide you with a dividend that is part way through the year known as an interim dividend during the year that's typically done on a quarterly basis or halfway through six months for example okay so that's what an interim dividend is part way through the year then you have a final dividend which is again final at the end of that trading period for the business so once you know they have um, completed that trading period they may give you a dividend at the end of the year so you have two types of dividends 
Okay. Something to note when calculating dividends is a business will pay a dividend on a particular date. So they'll mention in AQA that dividend, the dividend was paid on the 31st of December. Any shares that are in issue on that date are entitled to a dividend. So if they, for example, say to you, well, they sold a number of shares on the 31st of December and that a dividend is to be paid also on the 31st of December, then you must issue a dividend to those shareholders. Okay, even if you sell shares on a particular date and a dividend goes out on that same date, those shareholders are entitled to a dividend. Okay, and it's quite straightforward. If you sell shares on the 30th of December and you give a dividend on the 31st, well, those shares are already there. But what do you do if shares were sold on a date and a dividend was going to go out on that same date? Well, shareholders will be entitled to a dividend. Okay, even though the shares were bought on that same day. Okay, another thing that you need to remember is obviously when you are, you know, issuing dividends, don't forget to include the rights issue and the bonus issue. Okay, so obviously shares, sorry, dividends are paid to ordinary shareholders, i.e. ordinary shares, okay, share capital. Um, if you have a standard share, you're entitled to a dividend. If you bought out a rights issue, you are entitled to a dividend. If you were given free shares by the company you've invested in, then you are also entitled to a dividend. All types of shares are entitled to a dividend. Okay, and what students tend to do is they will provide a dividend for ordinary shares, but then they forget to calculate the rights issue and the bonus issue, and they forget to you know, provide a dividend to those shareholders as well. They are equally entitled. Okay. Also note another another point to note is when you are, I guess this is more to do with actually shares itself. Um, and I think I have, sorry, I have uh, for sure covered this before when we looked at, you know, share capital and share premium. But just be careful of the wording. Okay. If you are asked to calculate, you know, how much money is a company going to get if they sell X amount of shares at X price? Just be careful of the wording because they might mention, you know, at a premium of 20p. Shares were sold at a premium of 20p. So one pound plus the premium. Or they may mention that, you know, shares were sold 20p above par or above the nominal value. So you've got to sell the share at a pound plus the 20p premium or plus you know the par value or the nominal value okay that's where a grade do tend to catch you out it is fairly straightforward but again it's just something worth noting they also meant they may also mention in limited company accounts about you know something to do with the share was fully subscribed what does that mean what it means is if a company is offering a rights issue for example two for every five at 20p they are offering two shares to every shareholder for every five that they have so if you have a shareholder that has five shares they can choose to buy two if you have a shareholder that has 10 shares they could choose to buy four for example okay so when it mentions the share was fully subscribed what this means is you know this two for every five it means that every shareholder that had five shares bought the two so a shareholder that had 20 shares bought eight. So the full offer was taken up. It's a bit like if you're offering, you know, a customer to buy something and said, oh, do you want to buy this? If you, if you buy this, I'll give you this, this and this. They've taken up the full offer. OK, which which basically means all shares were issued. Uh, just a, you know, a very short example is if you had 10,000, <coughs> if you had, a, let's say, 5,000 shares in issue at the moment and you said to your shareholders let's do a two for every five you had five thousand shares in issue what that basically means is you would have issued two thousand shares two for every five five thousand shares in issue two thousand shares would have been sold so all of them would have been taken up okay and again you'll have some practice on this when you look at uh, this particular topic 
and where they mentioned the share was fully subscribed. Okay, it's just one of those terms, one of those limited company terms that they like to throw in just to, you know, throw you off so you're unsure about what you're doing. Okay, quick question on a dividend calculation. Some of you may not know this, but dividends are, you know, 2p per, per share. Okay, a 2p dividend per share. So let's take an example here. A company had the following equity. They had £50,000 worth of shares, 20p per share, and they had £10,000 in share premium. The company decided to pay an interim dividend of 2p per share. They then decided to offer a rights issue and then they paid a final dividend. So, how do we tackle this? So, the first thing is that we need to work out, as I mentioned, when a company pays a dividend, that the dividend is based on the number on the number of shares. So, if we have fifty thousand pounds worth of shares and they are 20p each, how many shares are in issue? So again, we calculate £50,000 divided by 20p, and that gives us 250,000 shares. That's the quantity of shares. Okay, And the company decided to pay an interim dividend of 2p per share. So 250,000 shares, 2p per share. The interim dividend is £5,000. Okay, so it's a straightforward question. How much in value do we have of shares? Convert it to quantity and then times the quantity by 2p and you get £5,000, which is your interim dividend. The next slide, we will have a look at the rights issue and the final dividend. Okay, so just remember the rights issue we have one for every four at 24p, and we have a final dividend of five pence. Okay, so what I've just done here, didn't realize this, but what I've done is um, the information from the previous slide is on the left, and you've got your breakdown on the right. So, point number one we've already done interim dividend was five thousand pounds. Okay, so point number two the rights issue one for every four at 24p so what we are doing is we're saying to our existing shareholders that look we've got two hundred fifty thousand pounds worth of shares in issue at the moment we are offering one for every four that you have so we divide it by four times by one or you can do two hundred fifty thousand times by 1 over 4, which means we are going to offer existing shareholders 62,500 shares. Okay, that is going to be our rights issue. However, what we're doing is we're saying to existing shareholders, that, look, if you want to buy them, we're selling them to you for 24p, which means 20p is our premium, sorry, 20p is our ordinary share, our par value. And the extra 4p is premium. So you can see what I've done here is I've done a split. So what you can do is how did I get these figures? Well, 62,500 times by 20p. So re remember when I talked you through uh, share premium, if you sell shares above par, then you have to show the split. So 62,500 shares times by 20p. 20p, lots of it goes into share capital and 62,500 times by 4p will go into share premium, okay? Part 3 is the final dividend. We have 250,000 shares at the start. We issued a further 62,500 shares. And remember, dividends are based on the number of shares, so we have a total of 312,000 500 shares times by 5p so 6 15,625 pounds is the final dividend okay i'm gonna have to um, move the next topics on to another, another video which will be part four so please look out for that